name is Alexander Niesen. I work for Itemis in, in Germany and I'm the project lead of the graphical editing framework here at Eclipse. Uh, and I'm going to talk about Jeff 5 um, from a user perspective today. Mm, the title is not really accurate because I'm not, going to, I'm not only going to talk about Jeff 5 but I will show the current state of the code base that has made its way into our Oxygen 5.0 release. And it's not particularly correct with respect to user perspective either because um, I'm showing GEF applications or features offered by our frameworks, how they would be visible to end users. And I want to share some examples with you during that talk to show you how GEF-based applications can look like. So adopters are the target audience as well, but I think um, I do not want to dig into framework details or stress APIs or anything else. Um, so the graphical editing framework is a framework here at Eclipse that provides end-user tools as well as framework components. Um, it is intended to provide a basis for implementing graphical rich client applications that are based on Java. Um, you can build standalone Java applications, but you can also integrate everything into Eclipse. Um, if I talk of end user tools here, then it's basically developers or developer near target audiences because the end user tools that we provide ourselves are rather technical. Um, so that I think needs to be clarified. Uh, Jeff 5 is the uh, second release of our next generation code base. You might have heard that the graphical editing framework project has quite some history. I think it's one of the oldest projects that is there at Eclipse. Uh, has been implemented internally at IBM, was then given to the Eclipse Foundation and it has been around a couple of years in a quite stable code base that um, uh, used SWT for rendering um, and it has been uh, matured over the years and has been preserved uh, in the last years and we started some initiative to renew the code base. Um, I don't know who of you has heard of Jeff 4. Yeah, so in parallel to the old legacy code base that was there we started to implement a new one that is uh, based on JavaFX as a rendering technology. We graduated that a year ago and with Oxygen we would have released uh, Jeff 4 2.0 and we thought that is not a natural thing to do. So uh, the second version of the new Jeff 4 code base is actually labeled Jeff 5 and the old Jeff 3 code base that has been around for literally years um, is deprecated by calling it Jeff Legacy and it's still part of the release train but we are not actively developing that. Um, so if you want to start with graphical applications um, now this is the code base that you should head for. Yeah, I called my talk how to, uh, or uh, from a user perspective and the question is how does a user get in contact with Jeff? Um, as we are a framework, the usual way to get in contact with Jeff is to use a GEF-based application. So some adopter takes our stuff and builds nice solutions with it. Or you happen to be one of the rare target audiences that had for our end-user tools um, that we directly provide um, as part of the framework. And I want to share both perspectives uh, with you shortly. So, as I said, Jeff has two end user tools. The one is Claudio, which is basically kind of a toy component. Um, it is based on profound research. It was contributed by, um, by somebody who did his PhD in that area and is SWT based possibility to render word clouds. So you can put in um, text files with words and you can render words. You have several parameters to influence uh, how the word cloud is arranged and you can export that as an image. You can basically do the same with tons of other generators you can find on the web. Um, that might be interesting if you want to build a 
Eclipse-based application and you would to include such a word cloud in a widget within your application because you can directly use an SW2 widget to render such a word cloud with predefined parameters um, if you have a uh, need for such. I don't want to show that live because I think that's not uh, the very interesting one. We have a second end user component and that is a authoring component that is meant to deal with uh, Graphis. Uh, Graphis dot. I don't know who has not heard about Graphis before. So Graphis is a, um, a tool that is open source as well, although it's natively implemented. It originated, I think, from the AT&T uh, Bell Labs context. is around for years and it provides automatic layouting. What you can basically do is you can uh, put or describe some graph structure. What you basically do is to describe the nodes and edges that make up a graph. You can provide attributes to them, like label text or visual properties. And then what DOT can do is it can render an image for you. And it includes an automatic layout of the graph. So it's highly usable in situations where, where you want to visualize certain graph-like structures. Uh, it can technically also be used to do some auto-layouting if you build Jeff-based applications, because we have a mean to integrate um, the graph with layouting natively. And uh, in our, um, as part of our end user tools, we provide an authoring environment that is based off an xtext-based editor for such um, graphis dot files. So there's a dedicated uh, syntax you have to use. There's a grammar around documented at the graphis site, and we have built an xtext editor that supports you in writing these things in a yeah, nicer manner than you can do it with a simple text editor. We also provide a view, the so-called dot graph view, which is able to ren uh, render um, these kind of input files um, directly based on our own framework technology. So using JavaFX and integrating that into Eclipse. And I can show you shortly how that looks like. So we have a um, text-based editor. You could have read that before. It seems he has scaled the thing when I plugged in the presenter. Uh, so this is a fully featured uh, Xtext editor that has built-in support for the different attributes, uh, syntaxes that are allowed by um, Graphis. So we have things like auto-completion. Uh, you have validation support in certain areas. We even have uh, things like uh, quick fixes included. Um, we are able to pass the complete dot grammar, I would say, but we don't have support for um, validations and error markers in all parts of dot. Yeah. So accompanied by that xtext-based editor via which you can specify graphs, we have a viewer that is linked to that editor, and this viewer is, um, is able to render this input file as graphis would render it. So you can see if I change the edge direction, for instance, then certain decorations are gone. Now if I change, uh, if I add uh, new nodes, these nodes will show up. Uh, I can also add new edges and then it gets relayouted. What it does under the hood is it actually calls the native graphis.executable and you can also link that directly and then you can see a PDF output here that is directly rendered with, with Graphis dot. And you can see our, our own rendering is pretty close already. So there are slight differences, but um, I think that's sufficient. Uh, this dot view is not capable of rendering everything yet. What we have added in the 5.0 release is support for clusters. So uh, Graphis has a special notion of subgraphs that are clustered, uh, so it puts a box around them and renders them or organizes, layouts them uh, as, a, as a unit. Um, and we now support uh, parsing and rendering of the stuff as well. There's also a dedicated syntax to parse labels that are written in HTML. Um, as you can see, our parser here is capable of parsing the stuff completely correct but the view is not able to render HTML labels yet. That is something we still have on our roadmap and where we are working on.
Besides these two end-user components we directly provide, um, Jeff comes with um, framework components and we actually have framework components that we can cluster, I would say, in two uh, main framework stacks. So we have one stack that is built of uh, the common geometry FX and MVZ components and that basically targets arbitrary graphical editors. So what we provide in the common is, this is just convenience functionality for juice-based bindings of an editor. We have a geometry API that is fully featured where you have the possibility to do arbitrary geometric computations like you need them in graphical applications like for instance computing intersection points of Bezier curves and also all kind of that. The FX components provide some additions to JavaFX. So we have, for instance, we have an abstraction to deal with connections and visual anchors and stuff. And the MVZ component is a model view controller framework which adds uh, interaction capability uh, in that respect. And then we have uh, an extension of that uh, framework stack um, which basically adds a, a simple graph-based model. So the Jeff graph model is just something similar to what we've seen with Graphis. I have, the, uh, I have an object model which I can use to describe directed graphs. And I can, have, uh, can attach layout algorithms to such a graph object to populate it with layout information and then I have some viewers and the this component provides those um, that can then take such a graph and render it. Within our application or within uh, our framework stack, better to say, we have an example application, the says graph example, which shows what this framework can provide. So what you basically have is support for um, representing graphs directed graphs with um, directed edges. We have some auto layouting um, behind. In this case this is an emulated own layout but you could use for instance the graph based layout. Uh, we have support of course to interact with this stuff. We can even zoom in and deal with nested graphs. So um, this framework basically supports dealing with graph life structures and you can build applications of it uh, or, or base applications on it that are graph-like. For instance, if you want to render something similar to a UML diagram or to a workflow a VPN model or something similar. It can deal with hierarchies that makes it quite flexible to use. And this framework can, for instance, be turned into something like that. So the, the dot graph view that I've shown you as part of the end user tools is actually using Zest under the hood. What we do there is we uh, just exchange the visualization. You can do that in a twofold way. We have the possibility to do CSS styling. So you can turn uh, this one into this one by applying CSS styling and or by exchanging the visuals with some custom visuals based on JavaFX. That's easily possible. And you can turn this framework also to look something like this. So this is an application I have presented this morning uh, that we've built together with, with ThyssenKrupp-Steel in Duisburg, which is used to do, um, or it is used in the context of manufacturing execution systems. So that's basically used to model um, the logic behind it. And it provides two viewers which are actually based on Zest. So one is looking similar to a yeah, UML class diagram, that means you model business objects and relationships between them. Um, it's rendered with uh, a Zest-based viewer that has some extensions. So we have added, for instance, support for some color tagging and filtering based on these tags. We have some navigation capabilities added so you can see this arrow here, it will open a carousel menu to navigate around, like you may know that from tools like Human Lab or anything comparable that uh, is used to navigate graph structures. And we have a second viewer that um, is a process viewer where you have a, a flow of control that is, uh, is modeled and you, you describe how parameters um, are, are used by the steps in this process. Both are based on automatic layouting, based on graphics, so 
um, you can turn something like this even into something like this without much effort. Here we don't have use CSS styling, but that is uh, something we have rendered with custom controls. So that is this, this complete technology stack that we provide. And if you want to develop something that's not a box and line thing, but which is a pure graphical application, I would say, then we have this lower part of the stack that deals with these kinds of things. So we have one example again that is provided um, as part of our framework, which we call the Jeff MVZ logo example. And you can install that directly via update, our update site as well. So this is what you get. Um, we have basically rendered our logo here. The old logo, the new one looks a bit like the Eclipse one. And you can interact with the stuff. So all that you see is not an image, but it's actually rendered from geometries. Yeah, we have the possibility to uh, work with the connections. We have the possibility to create new connections. Um, we can, of course, delete stuff. We can uh, provide undo functionality. Um, we have now added in the Jeff 5 code base actions that you can use to deal with uh, the viewport. So you can easily reset the zoom level, uh, center things and scroll things. You can even uh, have a content based zooming that is automatic. So if you have snap that in, then the content will always be uh, in your viewport. And we have things like a palette that can be used to create things by just cracking, uh, clicking through and creating new elements there. What has been added in the um, 5.0 context is that we have added support, for instance, for snap to geometry. That means if I now move things around, I get these visual support lines, alignment feedback things like you might know from Keynote or PowerPoint or Visio. Yeah. And we have added support for snap to grid and snap to geometry uh, in that as well. So I don't want to go into detail there, but to show you an impression of how applications based on that might look like. Because that, although very abstract, is still something that contains all boxes and lines, even though you can disconnect the lines and work with them. Uh, we have uh, rendered a, uh, or Itemis provides a product, the Akinu Model Viewer, that is there to render uh, MATLAB models that is also based on this technology. That still looks like box and lines, but if, actually if you look in the underlying model, then everything is just statically rendered and it's something to interact with um, MATLAB models. You also have support for highlighting syntax paths in there, so there's where, where feedback and, and similar things from our framework can be used. This one looks completely different. Um, it's a editor prototype I've built for a project that we did with the European Space Agency. You see there are a couple of companies involved. Um, what they have is a textual language for specifying the ground control systems and they wanted to have a interface for um, not so technical users that allow them to deal with the language and to do structural changes in the language, not in the Xtext editor, but via a graphical editor. And we build a prototype that is heavily inspired, as you can see, by Blockly from Google. Um, so it basically uses the same syntax, but the language constructs in here are um, those that are provided by the underlying language. And you can see the same elements I've showed you in the logo example. So there's this click through plat, and I can move around things. I have zooming, which is content restricted here and comparable things. But I don't have connections. So what we have used here is the possibility to visually attach shapes. And that is something um, which we have as an outstanding feature, I would say, in the model view controller framework that you can, that you have first class abstraction to not only describe visual nesting, so usually if you have a controller hierarchy you have a parent-child relationship, but we have a first class element that allows us to link arbitrary controllers together and to represent these kind of attachment, detachment scenarios like you need, need them in such a, a editor. So that still looks a bit like blocks but it doesn't show any edges. Um, 
I'm very happy I can show that one. Um, we were not involved in that, but uh, uh, Xavier Jacques from SIMPA has uh, had a talk on Eclipse Con France this year, where he has showed the system they have built for Airbus based on Jeff. Um, and they use it for fuselage configuration. So you have the possibility to uh, look into the plane and to place uh, or arrange the fuselage. Um, they have um, intensively, I, <laughs> I have to say, stressed our geometry API because they do a lot of computations with Bezier curve intersections and so forth because they, for instance, need to detect whether the seats collide with the wall and how the spacing is and so forth. And they have also used our um, interaction capabilities, for instance, to, to do something like uh, the creation of seats. So what you can see here are hover handles that are used. And you can see that there is selection feedback. And they have um, used that to move things around. They have a lot of capabilities built into that tool. Um, as I said, you can have a complete talk on that. If you're interested, I have put a link in the slides. Um, and you can also Google and find it quickly on YouTube that was recorded. Uh, and you can, you can see that it's really nice to see what can be, be done with these kinds of, or what, what they could do with our framework. It's, uh, if, if, if you develop an open source framework, it's not only clear what people are going to do with it. So we are always astonished to see what, what happens. And I think this one is, completely off from a box and line representation. That's something, uh, yeah, quite custom. And so is this one. Um, this is a historic um, Napoleonic strategy game that a uh, company in New Zealand is building. Um, and they use Jeff to render their maps and um, the uh, the landscape that I used. Actually, what you can see here is the Battle of the Peninsula War, 1812, Salamanca, it should be, I have learned. Um, that did also quite stress our APIs, because what he, for instance, wants to do is, uh, if you have uh, FES rivers, which span, then he wants to compute how thick is the river, so that the other river can directly be attached to that. You don't see that here yet, but um, Matthias, my fellow committer in the project, did a lot of work on the underlying geometry API to make these computations fast and reliable. And I think that shows that you can, that the abstractions that are there can be used to build quite different stuff from the classical UML class things that you might have seen 10 years ago. So what have we added in the, the oxygen time frame from the user's perspective? Um, as I said, we have worked on our Graphis um, environment. So we have added support for new language constructs there, which we didn't support before, like the HTML-like label support in the editor, or the cluster support in this Graphis based or in this uh, dot graph view. Um, we have added a lot of actions for zooming and scrolling, the ones I have shown you in the examples. Um, we have added this complete snap to geometry, snap to grid, uh, combined with alignment feedback block. Um, we have did several, we did several things um, that are just there to improve the user experience. So things like a discretized zoom, that if you zoom in and out, then you reach the 1.0 zoom level and not start with some fraction where things look messy. Um, we have added a new concept hover intent, which shows some hover handles only after your mouse pointer resides at the point in the diagram for a certain time. That can be used, for instance, to create things or to get a handle to delete things. And we have done some significant performance optimizations under the hood. And if you see that diagram in below, um, the blue thing in there is dealing with end user functionality. The orange thing actually is these are the amount of bugs that we did under the hood. So we did a lot of work to improve the API to make it more attractive for adopters to work with the thing to make things work uh, together smoothly. So we are just digging the surface here in this talk. Yeah, what's to be next? Um, as you know, after the release is before the release. So as oxygen is passed, we are now dealing with Photon. 
and we want to concentrate on improving the dot component further for Photon. That means we need to add support for uh, still missing concepts there. Uh, we especially need to pimp our uh, graphical view to be able to render things like HTML, like graphs. We also have an ongoing topic, I would say. Uh, uh, we want to bundle the graph as executably, uh, executable directly as part of our projects. I already initiated that over a year ago. Uh, unfortunately, we missed to get it in during the oxygen release train. While graphis dot is actually released under EPL code, the clearance checks that the IP team of Eclipse did unveiled that there is non-EPL code involved, and so we had to uh, take some turns with the Graphis team to get that uh, done. Now it seems to be fine um, under Mac and under Linux and we're still struggling with compiling a minimal dot executable that we can have verified and shipped with uh, under Windows as well. I hope that we can make it this time and that that can be included in Photon because that will enable our adopters to be able to rely on Graphis bait layout um, if you if you develop Eclipse-based applications without having to deal with bundling this, this stuff on their own. And as part of that work as Zest, or the complete stack which ends in Zest, is underlying that, uh, we want to take the opportunity to stress the Zest API again and see whether we have cut things appropriately. Um, actually, this dot environment has been a good um, reference application to, to deal with the concepts that we're offering there. And also the work, for instance, we've done with Tyson has stressed this API um, even more. And I think we will, uh, we will try to use the photon release time to do some fine tuning on there to make that even better and reusable. Despite from that, uh, we have now had two major releases in the last two years. So we try to keep it with a 5.1 this time to give adopters the chance to to use the framework without having to do a, a major API change again. Um, it may be that this does not hold for the Zest component if we, um, if we think it's really possible, it's, but it's not our intention to do a, an API break this time. Yeah, if you got a bit excited, <laughs> um, this is not an end user tool, it's just a simple tutorial that my colleague um, Hannes Niederhausen has built. That is a uh, simple mind map editor tutorial that uh, we provide for free um, at Idemis that you can download and it, it provides some insight into the model view controller framework stack and how that is organized and how you can you use it to build up such an easy um, graphical editor for mind maps. So that's not a real example application and it doesn't look as nice as it could be, but it's just there to explain some simple concepts and get, get you started. Yeah, so that's it for today. Um, if you have questions, I think we still have some five minutes for them. You all flashed, no? <laughs> yeah? Exactly. Um, how to go, uh, or probably what's the best way to, to interact with both of them? So SVT and, and okay. the so if you have some, some pack and drop or yeah. selection interaction, for example, if you select an element in JavaFX and one in SVT. Yeah, the question was how, um, how does the interoperability between SWT and JavaFX work if you have uh, JavaFX as the main rendering technology behind Jeff, and if you embed that into Eclipse application where you need to drag and drop from SWT uh, and do other interactions like selection propagation. Um, the answer to that is that our model view controller framework is actually split into several parts, actually into two. Uh, so we have one that is dependent on JavaFX alone, and we have one that integrates this into the Eclipse workbench. Um, there is a integration of JavaFX into SWT that is provided by JavaFX already. Uh, we provide an extension of it to fix some of 
the problems that are still in there. Um, so what you basically do is if you want to embed such a viewer into into Eclipse is that you have used this FX canvas. So you have an SWT canvas widget and the JavaFX content is directly embedded in that. That's the, it's happening transparently by the integration. What it basically does is rendering through an image and rendering that image on the SWT canvas. And that FX canvas also has support for mapping SWT events and transferring them into JavaFX events. So if you have a drag and drop SWT event that targets your um, application window where you have this FX canvas integrated and that gets transferred into a JavaFX event and that can then be dealt that with in the application on a JavaFX based manner. Um, we did some work to make that integration seamless because it was missing some functionality up to Java 9. Uh, for instance, support for touch gestures was not added there. So if you had SWT touch events, they were not forwarded to the JavaFX scene. And we have always been providing workarounds and now we have contributed some of these workarounds to OpenJFX. So they are now part of the JavaFX code base already. But um, this integration, um, yeah, it, it performs that mapping. There are slight problems, for instance, if you look into drag and drop, then the the drag event that is raised on the SWT site has few different information contained than the JavaFX event. So certain things cannot be easily done. For instance, if you drag something and you move your mouse cursor on the uh, FX canvas, then in your JavaFX scene you cannot detect what is, what is being dragged. You will get that information only when you drop it actually. So certain interactions cannot be supported out of the box. You would have to do workarounds there. But uh, that is all dealt with this integration scenario and it works quite well in the overall. Another question? Doesn't look like that. Then thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>